Let's call to order the uh, city council meeting for November 22nd. This is the regular meeting. Roll call, please. Council member Armstrong. Here. Council member Perkins. Here. Council members Afar. Here. Vice Mayor Barros. Here. And Mayor Hudson. Here. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, item three announcements. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Uh, we have none this evening, but I do have a public comment card for these for this item. You're kidding. <laughs> Okay, who is it? Taiwan's a country. Okay, take a minute. Hi, congratulations on your re-election. I would like to pull consent agenda 5.6 and 5.10, which is written on the speaker card. Uh, clerk, would you please uh, verify the number that I wrote on the uh, card for record pur purposes? What is the purpose for 5.6? That's exactly why I'm pulling it. What is the purpose for 5.6? Why do you guys need to spend money on solid waste and what is considered solid waste? Because I'm hearing that at the county uh, level as well. You're pulling 5.6, okay. 5.6 solid waste, right? Thank you. Anything else? 5 on changes or 5 additions? 10. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Next, are there any other changes? There are none this evening. Okay, item 3.2, if you wish to speak under public comment or regarding an agenda item, please fill out a speaker card located in the back of the room and submit it to the city clerk. If you are participating remotely, click the raise your hand button on your computer or star nine on your telephone to request to speak when public comment is taken on the agenda item. Item 3.3, boards, committee and commission meetings. Complete list of upcoming meetings may be found on the city website at www.sanramon, that's one word, no space, .ca.gov. Subscription service is available at the link for automatic meeting notification. Contact the city clerk with questions, 973-2539. That's 925-973-2539. Public comment is open. That's item four. At this time, the public is permitted to address the city council on... Items that are on the consent calendar, including a request to pull an item from the consent calendar and the reason why, request for future agenda items, special presentation items under section six, which there are none tonight, and items that are not on the agenda and are within the city council's jurisdictions. Do we have any cards for public comment? We have two this evening. Okay. They are here or on Zoom? Or... Yes, we have two here. Okay. Let's call them up and please take three minutes. Jonathan Lachole. Jonathan. Okay. Oh, we got Jonathan. You're gonna have to introduce everybody first before we start your time. Um, so this is Sunshine Reese. She's a pool manager at, uh, for the city of San Ramon. Okay. This is Grant Traeger. He's a lifeguard one for the city of San Ramon. Yes. And this is um oh, what's his name gabriel okay. uh liuzao uh gabriel liuzao uh he is a lifeguard one for the city of santa okay um good evening council members and mayor thank you for your time tonight my name is Jonathan Latchley, and I'm a pool manager with the city of San Ramon. I've worked for the city since the summer of 2018, where I started as a lifeguard one and have worked my way up to where I am today. Working as a lifeguard for the city of San Ramon has been an absolute pleasure. I've been given opportunities to grow as a lifeguard and hone my skills throughout the years. I've been allowed the chance to be a friend, a leader, and a mentor to staff, some of which join me today. It's always been a point of pride for me to say I'm a, a part of a great legacy of lifeguards that extends back to 1988. Being a lifeguard for the city of San Ramon has many benefits, flexible hours, team building events and activities, and the opportunity to learn life-saving skills and opportunities to grow and develop as, a member, as members and leaders of the community they serve. There's a positive environment at the pool which many of the uh, with many of the staff forming lasting bonds. Do quickly paint a picture of what it takes to become a lifeguard. To be able to apply, you must pass a 40-hour comprehensive training course that costs between $200 and $300. Uh, the interview pro uh, process tests your rescue and life-saving skills. Those who meet Santa Ramon's high standards are brought on board and join the Santa Ramon Aquatics team. 
Throughout the year, the lifeguards attend regular trainings to keep their fitness up and skills sharp. Lifeguards work in various weather conditions from below freezing to above 110 degrees, maintaining a pool safety as early as 4.30 a.m. all the way to 10 o'clock p.m. Being a lifeguard requires great mental fortitude, physical strength, dedication to keeping the community safe while saving lives. I'm here today to not only represent the current and future lifeguards, but also the future success of the aquatics program. Before you tonight is a resolution on a part-time staff pay, which covers the lifeguard staff that maintain a high level of safety at the pool. Uh, this brings me to the issue that I'm speaking on today, which is the pay for the lifeguards with the proposed starting pay sitting at minimum wage of $15.50. Over the past month alone, two lifeguards have left the city to work as associates at Trader Joe's, where pay starts at 17 an hour. This pay is not an anomaly around here either. Chipotle, has, which has two locations in San Ramon, uh, also pays $17 an hour, in and out pays 18 and the list goes on from there. Uh, in previous years, the city only competed with other public agencies for lifeguards, but now local private businesses that on average pay higher than San Ramon are taking away talented lifeguards. To accurately identify the competition for part-time recruitment, city staff should include local private businesses in its salary studies. Uh, this year, San Ramon was fortunate to not fall victim to uh, the nationwide lifeguard shortage due to its ability to recruit and retain staff, partially thanks to its proximity to local high schools, frequent staff events, and various opportunities for growth. We are ultimately concerned that the starting pay will overshadow these benefits and eventually steer away uh, potential candidates and dissolve the incentive to become a lifeguard. We all greatly appreciate the opportunities that the city has offered us. And as a staff, we want nothing more than to see the program we've helped to build uh, continue to grow and thrive. But if the city isn't able to maintain a competitive wage, eventually we will run into issues where the staff will find employment elsewhere and we will not be able to continue to offer the range and quality of services that we have prided ourselves on for many years. I thank you again for your time and ask for your consideration to what I've said today. Thank you. I'm impressed. You went a second over, out. No, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> thank you very much, Jonathan. We have to, next speaker, please. Taiwan's the country. Hello. Um, I would like to first um, ask this council to please um, move team council meeting from 6.30 to 6 o'clock so the parents and the community are able to uh, participate. Um, right now, the team council meeting falls on the same exact time as district board meeting, and they are now passing action items that are not being uh, approved or have public support of this community, which really is illegitimate power because these 19 teenagers are appointed by you. So their peers at the school sites do not have the capacity nor the ability to elect them. Therefore, if they don't like what they're doing at school because of your uh, initiation, they have no way of voting these teen councils out. This is not how democracy is um, run in this country. You are teaching them what is tyrannical and what, and you're making them elitists, which is really out of your power. The least you can do is allow the public to really know what they're doing. Right now, nobody can attend their meetings except the staff and themselves. Nobody else really knows what they're doing. So that I, I have true concern about the recent uh, wish tree that they have been doing. They could be compromising teenagers' personal information. Uh, additionally, I would like you to please always ask the staff for every meeting, including um, policy meeting, to have complete agenda like this. For some reason, the executive clerk refused to provide the public a complete set of agenda. She left out the minutes and 6.1 and 6.2, which were agendized items that the public deserved to know, but she refused upon request. But thank you to the city manager, he was kind enough to run to the copier, though he is not a clerk, to make the copy for the public. For that, I wanna thank you. But for the executive clerk, Karen Smith, she has been twice in a row fooling the public and it needs to stop. Also, I would like you to please stop the staff discriminating. Uh, people of yellow race from Taiwan, has been found to be ignored no, for months. None of their personal calls is picked up by the operator here. Last time Taiwan's a country, me, was here and I deliberately called, it rang, but the operator looked at the call 
and knew that it was coming from Taiwan's country, deliberately not picked it up. This kind of discrimination has to stop. Finally, East Bay Regional Park's uh, recent proposal for you to accept 675 pages, which are staff and open space didn't even bother to read, but want you guys to accept blindly because you guys have been working amicably has to stop. This entire document contains resident jeopardizing policies such as law enforcement. By allowing them to build more trails, we automatically become the resident of the East Bay Regional Parks because should we be bitten by dogs? And right now they require dogs to be, un they don't have to be leashed. They could be running wild. And should we be bitten? Then uh, SRPD doesn't have to help us because the jurisdiction is with East Bay, which is in Alameda County. I, I, I urge you to please stop and do not approve that packet until everyone knows what's going on. I live in San Ramon. I don't live in Alameda. Thank you. Okay. Any other speakers? Zoom. That was the last YouTube. speaker. Otherwise, part. public comment is closed. While well, we encourage your comments, unfortunately, state law prevents the city council from discussing this item, item, any items that are not on the meeting agenda. Uh, we take them seriously and we will ask staff to follow up appropriately. Next item on the agenda is consent calendar items. Uh, I've been asking for a motion of 5-1 through 5-5 and 5-7 and 5-8. Uh, I will discuss 5-9 and 5-10 yeah. separately. Uh, and I'll pull five six. Go ahead. I will pull five nine. Okay, five nine and five ten, both already pulled, and five six. I will because I'm interested to in see what she's talking about. Do I have a motion for five one through five 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 seven and five eight? So moved. Second. Motion Perkins second. So far, and the vote is. Da, 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 da. Gosh, we have to be retrained. I got a mover. I got a second. There's... Okay, five five to approve it, and five six will go on the uh, deferred consent calendar item. Uh, before us is five nine. Staff has received correspondence this afternoon, challenging the city's authority to award the Doherty Station Community Center bid. Um, staff is recommending that the council continue this item. That's 5.9 to December 13th, 2022 meeting. I will move to so continue it. Do I have a second? I'll second. Uh, uh, I kind of heard oh, she's the penis she's jumping squeaking. in there quick. Okay. <laughs> Close enough. We got one. We got two. Okay. Mark, five of five. All right, that item is continued to December 13th, 2022. Item 5.10. At the October 25th, 2022 regular city council meeting, the city council met in closed session to perform the annual evaluation of the city attorney. The city council voted unanimously to increase the incumbent's base salary to $22,500, effective September 25th, 2022. In addition, the city attorney will receive a one-time bonus payment of $3,000 and one-time one additional vacation day. Um, I, I'm have, and before we call for a motion, I did uh, hear that one of the speakers wanted to speak to 510. So let's open the public comment on that first. It's a little bit different and allow her to speak. I also vote 5.6. Wait, 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 what? If you are intending to open that, then we do have a deferred consent item section. Yeah. Uh, and if you are intending to open it, then I'll need to recuse myself. No, we're, we can't open it now. Well, because I'm going right down the line, but we'll do deferred. You may. Okay. I, I wanted to do it now. If <laughs> you you may. If you do that, then I'll I'll have to recuse myself. Well, we're going to be doing a lot of recusing tonight. So go ahead and recuse yourself. Go ahead. You're welcome to stay. I Always address us. Please. I'm not afraid to let you hear that. I am very disappointed with Mr. License, to be to say the least, as a taxpayer. When he first came on, I really, really respected him because I remember one time I was shut out by the clerks again outside of this building during pandemic. 
he happened to have walked into the building and he opened the door for me. So I had a lot of respect for him, for him until recently. Every single thing that is really against the taxpayers come from his department. Why do I say that? He has been advising you to not allow the public to pull consent agenda when that's the public's right to pull consent agenda so the public can understand why you guys are approving it as a package so we know that there's no secretive dealings or corruption. He advised you to not allow us to pull it. So what kind of democracy is that? Furthermore, his department, although not Mr. License himself, the deputy attorney has been making mistake that prevented our city to be able to properly develop the kind of planning for the development of the former Knob Hills location. I'm not sure what's going on with this um, department, but there is a lot of secrets going on, such as I remember there was a CIP that Mr. License department put in to hire additional staff for his department. Then we never know who was hired and why that person was hired because the CIP does not disclose that. We just know that there are regular budget money that is going towards that department. So I really would like you guys to please consider all those things that you really need to address with him, but did not. I'm not saying that you shouldn't give him the bonus or whatever. He perhaps is working very hard, but just not for the taxpayers who pay him, but maybe for you or for the people or the organizations who may be bribing you or you know something. There is something that is very different these days compared to before, such as, as the agenda packet is not copied in its entirety. What is going on with this kind of legal advice? It is absolutely illegal. So please address these concerns with him and give him the bonus he wants. But if he wants us to pay him more, he needs to work for us and not for somebody else. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak to this? I do. Good. Let's close the public okay, pro comment pro first. Uh, go ahead. I want to address the accusation of bribery. If you have evidence of bribery taking place amongst the council, committees, commissions, or staff, please take Stop. that information to the county district attorney, office of public corruption, take the evidence and show it to them. I assure you they are not bashful. They have already uh, convicted a former district attorney and the uh, county clerk. So if you have evidence, bring the evidence. If you don't, don't ever make that uh, accusation again. It is unjust, it is unfair, and it brings discredit upon you. Stop. I'd like to move uh, adoption of resolution 2022-141. I can second. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion Perkins seconds afar and we're coming. Thank you. Oh, it didn't take. Okay, we'll close that item. I have a couple of comments I wanna make. One, Items that are on the consent calendar, including a request to pull an item from the consent calendar and the reason why you wish to pull an item or an item. Please note the decision to remove the item from the consent calendar is strictly at the discretion of the city council. I assure you there are only five people in this room that know what the discussion was in closed session whether we discussed or didn't discuss anything about the city attorney. And last, our city attorney represents the city. He represents the city of San Ramon. And I'm gonna make one more statement because the very first action the city attorney is going to be doing after this is reviewing with me Senate Bill 1100 of how someone is disrupting a meeting and can be removed from that meeting. Our next item is 
Third consent. Uh, we moved to consent. We've done all the members, all of them that are on consent. It's special presentation. We're on the deferred consent calendar item. It's 5.6. 5.6 was pulled. It's about solid waste. And that is resolution 2022-137. We have any comments from staff? Seeing nobody jump up, let's hear what the issue is. The issue is you are trying to allocate to not exceed $583,000 to solid waste consulting when we had recently just reprogrammed our waste collection programs. The taxpayers are confused. Why do we need to pay this money? Is there something wrong with the current program that you just recently implemented? Are you going to charge us with more waste collection? Or is this about something else? What is solid waste to you? Is that, I mean, is that regular residential waste? Is that commercial waste? We have the right to know whenever you spend taxpayers' money, how that might impact us fiscally. And nobody is willing to come here and explain. That's why I had to pull it. I'm also hearing this from Supervisor Joya. So I suspect that there is a top-down kind of policy that is now screwing people's waste collection program, just like they are trying to screw people's water as well. It all has to do with green energy policies in California. I deserve to know. I have the right to know. Just like I have the right to say anything as long as it is not, you know, like a profanity uh, or whatever. I have the right to suspect something. And, you know, Council Member Perkins always feels like, and he's going to say something again. Points. He always feels like he needs to tell me what to say. Like, I'm a little Asian girl, six. elementary school student. I'm so what scared. What does this have to do with I'll move resolution number 2022-137. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, we have motion second and five votes for five. There are no city council appointments, no unfinished business. New business, resolution, resolution number 2022-142 authorizing the exception to the 180 day waiting period. <laughs> okay, we have a staff report by Maria Ferner. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. The Public Works Facilities and Aquatics Program Manager, Sandy Martin, is scheduled to retire on December 30th of We this don't year. let people retire here. <laughs> Can we vote no? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is after 26 years with the City of San Ramon. Due to the need to cover critical tasks in the facilities and aquatics program, staff is requesting that an exception be made to the 180-day waiting period for the hiring of CalPERS annuitants so that Ms. Martin may be temporarily appointed to the position of facilities and aquatics program manager in the Public Works Department. Approval of this exception requires a public meeting. As a program manager, Ms. Martin has been responsible for a number of responsibilities and tasks. This includes the day-to-day -day operations and staff for all 16 city facilities and two aquatic centers, the program's budget, the oversight of city facilities for coordination with the Parks and Community Services Department for programming, and program forecasting and scheduling expertise for amenities, renovations, and replacements. Recruitment and selection of a permanent successor to Ms. Martin has begun. However, it'll take several months before the appointment may be made. So during this time, there are critical tasks that need to be completed in the program, and Ms. Martin has the unique knowledge and skills to complete these tasks. The tasks proposed include the Doherty Station Community Center renovation, the San Ramon Olympic Pool and Aquatic Park renovation, specifically the building, various structures at Forest Home Farms, San Ramon Community Center renovation on the exterior work, 
the police and fire district joint public safety complex as it is completed and turned over to the public works department for maintenance and facilities and aquatics program transitions. The temporary appointment hourly rate salary rate will be equal to the facilities and aquatics program manager as currently budgeted for 22-23 fiscal year. However, no benefits or additional compensation beyond any hourly salary rate will be paid. The need for this temporary appointment is estimated to end Jan June 30th of 2023, working on a part-time basis. So with that, staff recommends that the council approve temporarily appointing Ms. Martin as a CalPERS annuitant to the position of program manager to form the functions described and other comparable projects for which she is uniquely qualified. I can answer any questions at this questions. time. Seeing none, sounds pretty cut and dry. Fine, thank you very much. Let's open the public comment. Come on up. Council members and mayor. Take one minute. Okay. So you want to approve Sandra Martin, but was she here? Did she say anything to you? Do you know her? If she is sincere enough to work on this is big thing. I am looking out for our staff. This is about their retirement. I don't want you guys to squander their retirement. So when they're ready to retire, their kids can go to college. If you truly care about the people who work for you, especially those who have been working a long time. They deserve to know what kind of person you're hiring. Get Sandra Martin here to speak. Who is she? Why is she qualified? Thank you. Okay, public comment is closed. Any further discussion from the council? Seeing none, what is the pleasure? Oh, I'll move resolution 2022-142. I can second. I'll tell you this right side's a heck of a lot quicker. Come on, you guys. Keep these up, dead keep beats up. over here on the left. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> they put an eight second delay on that side over there. Okay. Well, there you go. But Sandra Martin wants to give a 20 minute speech. We'll move on to yeah. item 10.2. Okay, 10.2 is public uh, hearing. This is a resolution number 2022 143, staff report by. Gloria Lee. Hi, Gloria. Hello, good evening, Mayor Hudson, Vice Mayor Burroughs, members of the City Council. Tonight, um, I'm recommending Council uh, to hold public hearing to vacate a portion of public right-of-way on Bollinger Canyon Road. And I'd like to provide a brief presentation to provide background on this item. So staff received complaints on deteriorating fence along Bollinger Canyon Road in Twin Creeks area. Staff went and checked out the site and recognized significant portion of the fence needed to be repaired. And um, as you can see in this photo, some of the fence are leaning towards the sidewalk and wood panels separating from the fence and um, some brick posts tilting towards the sidewalk, as you can see in these uh, photos. Um, staff went ahead and removed the failing elements of the fence and took some time to review the similar situation in the area. The map you see on this slide is the Twin Creeks area where these type of fence exist. And these type of fence are located on the west side of the Bollinger Canyon Road and extend from Dos Rios Drive to Ascension Drive as noted in red. And um, during the review of the fence ownership, staff recognized that significant portion of this fence is located in our right-of-way outside of the property line when these fence are uh, being used as an extension of the homeowner's property. So um, this slide zooms into the five lot between um, 
Camino de Jugar and Ascension Drive. And if you can follow my cursor, the existing fence is located in the back of the sidewalk uh, following the roadway alignment. But you can see that the property line does not extend all the way out to the fence. And to confirm this finding, uh, staff hired a licensed California land surveyor to confirm uh, the location of the property line and the existing fence. And this is slide is a snapshot of the survey that the surveyor provided to the city. And as anticipated, uh, the surveyor confirmed that the existing fence for these five properties are located outside of their property line. And after confirming that with the surveyor, uh, staff discussed the situation with um, the policy committee and what to do with this uh, sliver of right-of-way um, highlighted in yellow. Well, um, this area was developed in the early 1970s and approved by the county before the city was incorporated. And at the time of development, these fences were constructed for the benefit of the property owners and not for the public. And this irregular uh, boundary line you see at this location is likely due to the different design ideas that was exchanged at the time of development for what was required for Bollinger Canyon Road. And it is very likely that developer may have intended to update the map to extend the property line to all the way to the fence, but they may have um, gotten to do that, which happens in development projects from time to time. And um, this area, this sliver of right of way has not been used by the public and the city does not anticipate using this area in the future. So for all these reasons, um, policy committee supported vacating this portion of right of way and officially transferring this area to the adjacent property owners for them to officially own and maintain. Um, the uh, vacating public right of way means that the city will abandon and terminate its right to use this area for public use. And um, the purpose of vacating this um, portion of right of way is to, is to clarify the ownership of the fence between the city and the property owner and to um, make sure that, uh, not to make sure, but also uh, for the benefit of the property owners, um, when we vacate this portion of right of way, then these property owners will officially then own up to the fence line. Um, it is also, well, the city has a franchise agreement with the utility companies, giving them right to build their facilities in the public right of way. For example, um, this sliver of right of way does not have existing utilities at the moment, but in the future, if any of the telephone companies propose to build a cell tower in this area, then they have the right to build a cell tower as long as this area remains public right of way. So it is an added benefit um, for the property owners for the city to abandon its right to use this area to prevent this from happening. So um, with our discussion with the policy committee, uh, we reached out to these five property owners and explained the situation and um, offered them 
a proposal to transfer this portion of right of way with the condition for them to maintain the fence uh, and the landscape behind it uh, in proper condition. And um, the property owners at lot 87, 89, and 90 agreed to accept the right of way um, and staff will provide them with the appropriate plat and legal of the vacated uh, portion of the right of way for their records. And the two lots, uh, lot 131 and 88, whose fence still remains in the public right of way, we will continue to work with them to maintain the fence and abate hazardous uh, condition if they arise. So uh, as a recap, um, the staff is recommending to vacate this portion of right-of-way in blue to clean up the unintended mistake um, or old mistake uh, from the time of development, clarify uh, fence ownership uh, between the city and the property owners, and establish maintenance responsibility and reduce potential liability for the city and prevent new utility construction. So uh, with that, uh, staff is recommending the city council to conduct public hearing to vacate that portion of right of way as required by um, the Streets and Highways Code section 8324, take public comment, close public hearing and adopt resolution 2022-143, vacating a portion of right-of-way abutting lots 87, 89, and 90 of subdivision 4383 to the adjacent property owners. Uh, once the resolution is adopted, uh, staff will work with the city clerk to record the resolution uh, with the county clerk recorder's office to effectuate the transfer and provide recorded copy of the uh, resolution and appropriate plat and legal to re um, legal description of the vacated right of way to the three property owners. And that completes my presentation. Go ahead, Scott. Um, did the, yeah, clarifying question. Yeah. Did the HOA give a reason why they weren't interested in taking their? Yes. Um, <laughs> took my question. <laughs> they were not interested in taking additional um, uh, maintenance responsibility. So the, they are aware if the fence, um, portion of their fence is sitting in our public right of way and the fence happens to be in a hazardous uh, situation, then we have the right to abate it. Okay. And they recognize that should Verizon or T-Mobile want to put a cell tower on that piece of public right-of-way? They should be aware. Yes. They and they are, aware. they've been made aware of that. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I had a similar question, but it has to do with lot 88. 88. Uh, what yes. any reason they gave on why they didn't want to take it. So the resident um, is a longtime resident there. Um, he mentions that he was living there for over 45 years, around 45 years. And he was very displeased uh, that to find out and to have uh, have the city sending him letters stating that a certain portion of his right um, property belongs to the city. And he was very displeased and our offer to um, vacate that portion of right of way to transfer it to his lot was not well received. And he was very nervous about it and sent us a letter to seize any actions that we're trying to do on his property. So um, we're only trying to help, but it wasn't well received, and um, that's where we had to draw the line. It happens. Interesting. Thank you. Sridhar. So just to make sure I understand, uh, if we approve this, uh, the owners will remove their backyard, whatever the fence, and then they'll repair and replace the current city, the one which is breaking down. Are they going to pay for it, or is it 
we are going to pay so, for it. So uh, I forgot to mention in my presentation, um, this portion of the uh, area that we're trying to vacate, the property owners are already using it as an extension of their backyard. So there's landscape improvement. And recently these property owners went through repairing the fence after we sent out an email um, uh, letting the property owners know it is the property owner's responsibility to maintain the fence in proper condition. And um, these property owners um, did well maintaining um, and responding to the letter and they have already done that part so right the now the, the on their own expense okay so the right now the right of way fence is already fixed you're saying it's not any more tilted and it is no up. not for this area not this area okay it's taken care of. yeah thank you um i believe you said the hoa turned it down turned it down they were offered to do this they, they the were, HOA company? Well, the board of directors. Okay, that's what I'm getting at. The board was aware, so it's their responsibility to let the, the owners or the membership know what's going on. That is odd, tell you the truth. I, while you focus on it, I mean, I've been on a few boards, and I would have let the people know that, hey, you can get a new fence here. I mean, I would have at least taken a look at it, but if they did, they did. Okay, if there's no further clarifying questions, I'll look for a motion to open the public hearing. I'll open the public hearing. Oh, Sridhar beat you to it. You want second? Okay, you can have second. And we'll need a vote after we get all this up here. Is there any further council discussion? I think we're all talked out. It's five to five to open the public hearing. So let's uh, have some public comment. Thank you, Gloria. Any public speakers? Taiwan's a country. Hello, council members and mayor. I know you guys all have the same packet that I'm looking at. You must know that the staff did not include the letter nor the email that she told you she sent to the homeowners. This actually reminds me of Chinese Cultural Revolution in Communist China when the government is trying to steal personal properties from homeowners. These belong to someone. These land belong to someone. The proper procedures, as many of you know, is to number one, notify the property homeowners for repair. Furthermore, we need to verify if this belongs to the homeowner's uh, responsibility or the HOA. Right now, the staff seems confused herself because she just said the HOA is aware of it. So the HOA is going to fix it. Then it's not the homeowner's responsibility. I own homes. I own home in a HOA. Whatever is my responsibility is never my HOA's responsibility. We are in a democratic country that has very distinct property ownership rights and laws. At this time, I'm not convinced that the staff has done her job. I think what it is, is that this area may pose as some sort of governmental interest for say 5G wire inlays. Maybe you guys are trying to put in some sort of infrastructure and their properties are in the way. So now the staff comes up with this problem to steal the land. And now you guys can easily go into per, prop, private property to do whatever you want, which is 5G infrastructure. It's very possible because I do not see any attachments of letters nor emails. I do not believe her. Furthermore, where, where, where are the homeowners? Where, where are the homeowners today? Me, as a nice neighbor and a nice resident, I'm here fighting for them because I know property rights. Where are they? Were they, were they personally notified of today's meeting? Were they invited? Did they send a written notice to them about tonight? Please hold this off. Make sure the homeowners are completely aware as well as the HOA, or I consider you communist Chinese. Thank you. Any other speakers? Anybody on Zoom 9 or raise your hand? We have no hands raised on Zoom. Okay. Um, there's any written public comment on this? We have nothing for this item. Okay. Then I need a motion to close. Motion, motion Perkins. Second. 
Second 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 Sridhar. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you all of them. Uh, any further discussion on this? Uh, I would just say that you know I've been on a few boards too, where if somebody wants to give me property, I'll take it. Uh, I mean, I'm I, I'm sorry. I, I I don't think there's any. Who is the second on that one, Sridhar? Oh, he's trying to get it. There you go. Okay, we got five out of five, it passes. Item 10.3. Oh. oh, no, we got to keep going on. I'm sorry. All right. Is that your motion? See, uh, our attorney, a uh, second uh, uh, Thank you for beating me to the punch. Attorney. <laughs> attorney Perkins caught me. Okay, I need to change. Go ahead. Okay. Any further discussion on that? We've talked it out. Okay, do we have a motion to mover Perkins? You seconding? Okay, second so far. Yes, I'm sorry, it's moving a little quick there. Uh, on September 29th, we're on to 10.3. On September 29th, 2022, Governor Newsom signed Senate Bill 1439, that was our own Steve Glazer's bill, into law. This new law requires that I recuse myself from this item as I have received a campaign donation from ACI within the last year that exceeds the statutory limit of $250, uh, which is specified under Governor Code Section 84308. So I will be turning over item 10.3 to Vice Mayor Sridhar Barroso. Thank you. Yeah, item 10.3. All right. Very good. Well, That's good. Yep. Goodbye, Mayor Hudson, and uh, hello, Vice Mayor Bros, uh, Council Members Zafar. Perkins and Armstrong. My name is Carrie Parker. I'm the Environmental Services Program Manager in the Public Works Department. I'm here tonight to talk to you about a scheduled cost-based rate adjustment to your trash rates for, with Alameda County, County Industries of San Ramon, also known as ACI. So, uh, as I detailed in the staff report, annual rate adjustments with ACI are expected at the beginning of every calendar year and are detailed in the city's 15-year agreement with ACI. Essentially, in the fall or in cost-based uh, situations like this year, we receive in August, we receive a rate application from ACI uh, detailing their uh, revenues, their costs, and we hand this over to our consultant team at HF and H Consultants, and they go over it with a fine tooth comb to affirm what the rate will be for the next rate period. They sure it. Uh, they assure us it uh, conforms with the agreement and uh, with uh, rates, index rates all over. Uh, these are mostly, as you can see, index-based adjustments, and every four years is a scheduled cost-based adjustment. This is a truing up of actual costs of service and actual revenues given the economic climate, both regionally and nationally. Uh, January 1, 2023 marks the beginning of rate period four, which is the first cost-based adjustment of the agreement, indicated in red. Let me catch you up tonight on how these have gone so far, and I show this just above that red line. Uh, the franchise agreement with ACI was signed in November of 2018, and ACI began providing waste collection services in the fall of 2019. That fall, ACI was charging the same rate as the former waste collection hauler had been, so we call that rate period O. Uh, and then on January 1st, 2020, as San Ramon received a rate adjustment that was fairly steep, mostly due to a market adjustment truing up how much these services really cost, and pairing that up with a modernized collection agreement that addressed mounting state regulations San Ramon faces in regard to recycling and composting. That was the beginning of 2020, and I wish that was the end of the volatile rate story. It's not. 
as you know, we all experienced the global COVID-19 pandemic. This had some dire implications for this brand new franchise agreement. So at the beginning of 2020, we received, instead of the index-based adjustment we expected, an extraordinary rate increase request. This was mostly due to uh, commercial revenues falling off due to closures and a steep increase in residential waste tonnage due to families now working from home. This extraordinary increase request was resolved between the city and ACI with a one-time cash payment out of the solid waste fund and by allowing ACI to defer some fees paid to the city that are being paid, pack, paid back over time. There was no increase to rate payers for rate period two. For rate period three, this rate application was evaluated by HFNH and found to be a slight decrease due to a reduction in disposal costs in the commercial sector. At that time, staff was anticipating the scheduled cost-based adjustment that we're talking about tonight and decided we should bank that savings and roll it under to rate period four. As I indicate with the green arrow on the right of your screen, we are here on the cusp of rate period four and you have a rate adjustment right here in front of you tonight. We received ACI's application for rate period four in August and set our consultants again on the task of the more in-depth cost-based rate review. As you might imagine, if you are following local or national cost increases, everything has gone up. For ACI's operations, fuel supply chain issues have complicated equipment orders and higher than normal CPI and other index cost increases drove costs up and realized revenues were less than anticipated in large part due to commercial recycling subscriptions. You can see that the revenue points on the bottom of this slide where actual revenues are not meeting the revenue requirement to stay above water and instead projects a 17.5% shortfall, which needs to be trued up in a cost-based rate adjustment like we are looking at for rate period four. So anticipating the possibility of fairly high rate increase for 2023, staff has tried to find ways to modify the increase given recycling incentives that may be outdated due to state law and uh, or tighten up various service level, level discounts that are offered to certain customers. So as I discuss these options, note that CPI from uh, 2019 to now has increased 15.69%. So in option one, uh, which is the base increase to rates coupled with the roll under savings from last year, as I discussed earlier, is a 13.02 rate adjustment. That's the base of what we're talking about today. Okay, so option two, this is a possibility that I want you to think about carefully. We can uh, remove free commercial recycling service, and that will have a uh, savings of about a percentage point on this uh, discussion. And uh, let me tell you what this free recycling service is. Every commercial account that subscribes to recycling services in the city of San Ramon gets one free cubic yard of recycling service. This type of free service is known uh, as a recycling incentive in uh, many circles in order to get businesses to recycle more. Added to that, the commercial recycling rate is half the trash rate. So even if you are signing up for recycling services, it's going to be half of the trash rate. So we are already incentivizing that recycling. Uh, but if you understand from the previous slide that the collection trucks and drivers are not free, and that state law has progressed where recycling and composting is mandatory in the state of California, providing this free service might not be in the ratepayers' best interest. Uh, if we eliminate the free one-yard bins, there's a possible almost 1% of savings. Okay, option three, reduce the savings for the uh, 20 gallon and 35 gallon customers. And now this is shown visually a couple of slides away. I'll let you see it in a second. But these two customer types have, uh, these two customer types receive a discounted rate compared to the 64 and 96 gallon customers. And when I say nine, when I say 20 gallon customers here, 
I mean a bundled service where there is a 20 gallon trash cart and there is a 64 or 96 gallon recycling organics cart right next to them, right? So it's a bundled rate. Um, we base our service levels on that trash cart. If we ask these customers to pay just $2 more a month, in addition to the rate increase, the rate adjustment for everyone will be 10.83%. So then all options. So really we're talking about combining those options two and three. Uh, they will yield an overall 9.78% overall increase. There are considerations to be made about this too, but it's good to note that. Oh, hold on, went too far. And in this slide, um, I've combined some of those uh, kind of the, uh, so a selection of popular service packages in San Ramon and how these options will affect, affect those rates. Note that these are monthly rates for most residential, except for uh, multifamily, is billed quarterly. So I think I want you to, it's, it's easiest for me, and I don't know about you, but maybe you too, to look at, let's say this top one, 20 gallon bundled service. And the current price for that per month is $34.05. And if we go all the way to the most extreme option, that same service level will be uh, worth $39.57. It is an increase, uh, but one that may seem manageable. Uh, for multifamily rates, we can set it right here. Uh, it starts at $448.11 and goes up to a possible $491.92. And that's two cubic yards uh, service once per week of solid waste. They get bundled uh, recycling and organic services as shown in this line. Then commercial rates, you can see how they kind of shift around. If you look at the, at, uh, this is, this is, I think is interesting. If you look at the current rate, it moves up from $216.34 to $244.51. Um, so that's option one. And where we might ask them though, to pay for that extra yard of service where they might not be paying for it right now. Uh, you're looking at the increase of 11.93% plus that $121 for that yard of service. So it's something to consider in option three. And so in option three, you can see how uh, in the 20 gallon and 35 gallon, they're not receiving the same savings as the others, but it's really, this is minute stuff at this point, but it's something to consider, right? All right, and then I included this slide so you could see the relationships between the discounted 20 gallon bundled service and 35 gallon bundled services, which 20 gallons in blue, 35 gallon is in reddish color, uh, and how much that is discounted compared to the 64 gallon bundled service in green and the 96 gallon bundled service in uh, purple. Uh, and it kind of, and, and so in option three, again, ever so slightly, this is bumped up a little bit for these two. They're getting closer to this uh, green line, let's say. But so it's just something uh, to note that there is an increase, but it's it's rather small. Um, the 96 uh, gallon trash cart customers tend to be large families with a lot of trash like diapers that cannot be diverted into the composting or the recycling stream. Uh, and after you're seeing this, you think that you could possibly use a smaller trash cart to get a lower price. Please call ACI in the morning to adjust your service at 925 380-9480. All right. And this, uh, I created this so that you could really see, this is where the rubber hits the road. And council members, you must discuss and choose one of the options to adjust the rate for January 1, 2023 tonight. I have one more slide after this that discusses what will likely be included in the second amendment to the franchise agreement. But let's stare at this a minute before you deliberate on what to choose. So option one is go with the base uh, increase 
uh, where it applies to all sectors, 13.02%. In option two, that again, that's removing the free recycling service, one yard of recycling service for commercial customers. The rate drops a bit to 11.93%, but the uh, customers this affects, and commercial customers, there's about 300 counts, but the number of accounts that this affects is about 100. They will pay possibly another 120 more in addition to this increase, in addition to the 11.93%. For option three, uh, this is where we inch up the cost for by $2 uh, per month for the 20 and 35 gallon customers. This affects about 17,000 accounts. So 35 gallon customers, I think is our, is our standard uh, service package here in San Ramon. Um, and so that kind of makes sense to me that it would, it would lean so heavily there. These customers will pay an extra $2 in addition to the increase of 10.83. And then if we have both option, both of those two and three options, the rate will be 9.78%. That will be the rate adjustment. And it raises costs. Uh, and I say here for everyone except those customers 64 and 96, but that's not quite true. It's just not quite the same impact on those 5,000 customers. But everybody will... There's, there's, what's, there's would be a flat 9.78. The others also have uh, either they have to pay for the one yard of service or they have to pay that extra $2 a month. So I'm sorry, that, that was a little confusing. I saw it just before this and uh, realized that that was confusing, but that, that's one it's item. 9.78 across, and then there's a the recycling for commercial customers is the extra 120. That's right. For the smaller carts, bundled carts, it's an extra two dollars a month. That's right. Okay. Okay. Should I have a seat while you discuss? <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you, um, Council. Any questions before we open for public comment? Questions, please. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, if I understood that last slide here, so there's about seventeen thousand. 20 and 35 gallon customers. And then the the next bullet over talks about the remaining 5,000. So, Correct. you know, a total of about 22,000 overall Correct. Uh, accounts. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do you, how do you define what's a commercial entity, right? You got 300 accounts, but I mean, is this every, is big businesses and small businesses, mom and pop, Correct. Uh, all, all, restaurants. Anything that you can imagine that is that commercial, not residential account here in town. And so, so they have a base rate that they subscribe to, and we are talking about it. Could be even they could have carts, uh, trash carts, you know, and that sort of thing. But they might have qualified for a free uh, one yard recycling. Yeah, bin. but it, like I see in some some of the shopping centers, uh, there seems to be a big, you know bin big bins right yes. so and is that is that shared that big bin that cost shared by they, all the commercial entities in that shopping center they obviously don't need the incentive so i'm not sure that it's actually offered to them at that sort of generation volume am i correct about that yeah more than one yard free option goes away Okay. All right. Uh, and I guess the, the last question I had would you know we've we've had HF and H, if I said that right, the uh, consultant, mm -hmm. um, taking a detailed look at this. Very. Have we had the same consultant since we entered into this contract with ACI at the have. very beginning? We have. It's the same eyes on the same numbers. Yes. Okay. They they assisted us with the selection process that we went through. Okay. Three years ago. Correct. Three plus years ago. Yes. So is the amount of money that we paid for H and H consulting in one of those consent items? Is it only for RP four cost adjustment study, or is it for? 
The uh, number that you're saying, the contract, the not to exceed, that is for the entire time that we have worked with HFNH since the beginning of this. Beginning, contract. like all yeah. these 15 years, if they are going to serve us. It's an amendment. Correct. It's this. an amendment to extend the, the uh, term of the contract. Sounds great. Um, what are we seeing in other neighboring cities? In other neighboring cities, it... It changes, right? We have uh, uh, the jurisdictions to the north of us are uh, uh, organized by a waste authority, the Central Contra Costa Waste Authority. They have Republic and they um, they take that scale and they negotiate based on the number of customers in that larger group, right? The Danville, Alamo, Walnut Creek, Lafayette, uh, Arinda and Moraga. Um, and so, and they have Republic. So they are uh, looking at, uh, I believe they're looking at an amendment to their franchise shortly as well. But I, ha I haven't heard anything coming out of that yet. Um, to the south of us, uh, I believe that Dublin, I'm actually, I'm sorry, I don't know too much about that. But everybody is looking at increases because of the reasons that we've stated in this evaluation. My recollection is that our rates have always been very competitive. And in fact, we're typically near the bottom third of our peers in terms of our rates. Yes, and in the county- I won't say it's in the bottom 5%, but we're in the no. bottom third typically is my recollection over the- past a uh, couple of contracts we've we've had very good contracts and uh, very good working relations and I, i'd like to remind um mark wasn't here were you here when we did this contract no, sabina just before I okay the one of the key things in selecting aci oh if, if, uh, phil phil alone was here for that and and we had done a survey. This is back in Dave's time. We had done a survey, and one of the elements of the survey was what's most important and in your solid waste service. And the number one was customer service. And number two was environmental programs. And number three was cost. We asked people to rank those three. And the results, and the, and the, Results weren't close. The, the results were pretty profound that, that customer service was number one, um, environmental programs is number two, and cost was number three. And through the process, we had staff working with the consultant do some surveys of the um, customer service of the waste haulers that had um, provided uh, bids. And the difference in customer service between ACI and the second place one was more, if you have a, a one through five, I think it was one through five we used, or was it one through 10? In any case, it would have been like four and a half and three and a half. It was substantially different between the two. It wasn't like 4.5 and 4.2, it was 4.5 and, and uh, you know 3.0, it was, it was substantial. And base and the cost difference was just a couple of percent, and the environmental programs with ACI were substantially better, and their targets for meeting um, the waste goals we had and the recycling goals we had was far superior than the second place um, than, than the other uh, hauler, and so we chose uh, ACI, recognizing that we would have this cost-based adjustment. It would, that was a very important thing for both of us. If, for example, the market for recycling plastic actually grew instead of shrank, and the market for recycling paper and cardboard grew instead of shrank, we might actually have experience, and if there hadn't been a pandemic and a thousand other what ifs, um, we might have actually had an opportunity for a cost reduction. It's possible. It didn't happen, but um, as we know, the, the Chinese have chosen to 
reject almost all plastics. And so the waste haulers have had a terrible time trying to trying to find places to send um, plastics. And in my discussions with them, it turns out that uh, if you actually look at the little bottoms where you see the little triangle, there's a one through seven down there. Only one and two can really be recycled. Three, four, five, and six, put it in the trash because that's where it's going to end up. There is no market for three through seven at this time. Is that, is that, is that true? I, I believe it's still true. Um, three through seven. So one and two. But here we are. This is part of the agreement was to uh, make this uh, adjustment based upon costs. The fact that we've had very large inflationary pressures. Now, I want to point out that seven, we have not had a adjustment to the rates since we implemented the contract. So we're looking at a, if you want to divide those numbers by three, that would give you a average of the um, the rate adjustment over a three-year period. Yep. So while it's painful to do a 9, 10, 11, 12% increase, the fact is that 9, 10, 11, 12% increase is really a three, four, five, or a, you know, a three, three and a half, four percent increase per year going forward. And so it's kind of up to us now to decide which one of these we would prefer. I have a few questions to clarify. Uh, could you please explain uh, what it means unrealized revenue from commercial recycling? Uh, sure, but I would like some help uh, from my uh, colleague here at HF&H. It's here to speak. That, this is Dave. That Hilton. might be what Scott was talking about. Was Maybe vice mayor, the yeah, council members. Uh, unrealized revenue is uh, essentially revenue that was. Speak to the microphone, not... please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> unrealized revenue is essentially uh, when the initial proposal was made, there were assumptions about subscription, and those assumptions uh, had a correlating revenue impact for those uh, commercial recycling customers, and it did not uh, actually come in. So those customers either were not there or they downsized in the amount of service that they were receiving into uh, most likely one of these free one yard recycling services. So is it because the consulting company couldn't able to estimate properly uh, why that difference came in? Um, there's a number of reasons you could look at migration, um, but there were assumptions put forward. Those, those estimates for subscription were put forward um, by ACI. Uh, the other proposers as well had similar subscription estimates. Um, and it may may likely be a result of the way the rate structure currently is set up, that those just didn't come in. Okay. But that seems to be, do we know the measurement, like what is the impact because of that? How much? Um, in terms of what the increase we're looking at is, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. What I can say is that the recycling revenue uh, came in at about a quarter of what was expected. Um, if I was to ballpark the impact on the estimate, I would say it's about five to 10% of what we're looking at. Five to 10%, okay. Uh, I have a few more questions, please bear with me. Uh, one more thing here, um, instead of offering a one-time discount to rate payers, these savings on RP4, were all uh, on RP3, I think, yeah, it's like 0 0.9%, 0 0.09, it's like 236,952 dollars, right? That's correct. So is that money is already moved to RP4? Correct. That, that, was I, that was identified as a savings in rate period three to be used uh, against a rate increase for rate period four. So that is included in that 13.02% option one. Sounds good. Thank you. And in table, uh, one of these table, I see 35 gallons. Is it, do, we, do you provide 35 gallons or 32 gallons? Because... <laughs> Did I put the wrong one? That is a common mistake. Let me go back. Did I put it in here? Now 35. 35 is the gallons it's supposed to be, but I may have said it, is, it wrong. It shows as 35. Then it's 35 is correct. Correct. Okay. Then it's good. Yeah. Because when I went and checked on your website, your website says only 32 gallons. Your ACI website. Yeah, I think the website says 35, but I will check for you. Yeah, yeah I, I checked it. Okay. <laughs> okay, and then um, 
Now, uh, in option one, I see the table there. It says uh, it shows only 35 gallon bundle, 64 gallon, and 96 gallon. Oh, here it is updated. Okay, I see 20 gallon now. <laughs> Whereas in this page, in this document, I, I didn't see that, but that's okay. Because I was wondering why 20 gallons is missed there. So, okay, okay so now. Let's say uh, if we, if council don't approve any of this increase, right? So it means we are breaching the contract, right? That's so, okay. right. So, so what will be the consequences if we breach the contract? Cool. Well, it's. Um, I'm not sure that we have uh, that option in front of you tonight. Uh, the increase as it stands and as it is in the contract. Uh, uh, is is there is there a better way to say in this but it is a required annual required. increase and there are either the index either the index based or cost based adjustment with direct steps on how to uh, go through that process and the resulting increased it's simply formulas that are to be followed um, and are required annual increases yeah i'm asking these questions make to make sure that our community knows that we go through these questions and we are making sure that we are doing our due diligence before we do approvals of these kind of things. I appreciate that. We want to touch base all the questions that we receive from the community. At the same time, I want to make sure you understand that. Now, uh, do we know how much is impact because of the China not accepting this recycling in this whole scenario? Um, the recycling component, um, there's a split. I do not have those exact numbers in front of me. What I can speak to is that uh, the city of San Ramon did receive uh, a bit of a credit in terms of the recyclables processing because the material is cleaner uh, than the other jurisdictions that go and take their materials to the MRF. I believe it was about an 8% uh, difference in the uh, residue that is processed from San Ramon's material and the MRF average. Sounds good. And now, did we already communicated this with our residents through any communication or are we going to do this before we do this rate hike? How is this going to work in next steps? Well, we will. We have been communicating this year about this uh, rate increase. I think that the uh, that we can have some sort of communication go out uh, via these offices, but I can look into that. Okay. Yes. And if residents um, need, they want to protest it. Do they have any option on that one? Um. I, in terms of the increase, no. This is something for staff and for council to kind of govern and and move forward move forward okay sounds good that's uh pretty much my questions any other questions yeah so this so you would will approve one of these obviously um and then you will turn around and notify the customer base and it becomes effective one january so on a quarterly billing it would show up in the April, the bill you receive in April, based upon the January, February, March, or you actually probably mail it in March, and it's due in early April or something like that. Is that is that have I got it roughly? No, the, the, billing the rate cycle, increase is effective one January. One January. So the billing cycle that is released at just after uh, one January uh, will receive this rate. Well. Okay, Correct. but I've been paying or effective January. Effective January. Effective January. It's effective January. So the October, November, December rates don't get affected. So yeah. the bill I'm paying effectively for, do we pay in arrears? Or do we pay in, in advance? No. It's in, it is in advance. Well, you're paying in advance. Okay. So we pay in advance. So the bill we receive in December will reflect the new rates for the following quarter. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any questions, Council Member? Before I open for public comment. Yeah. Let's do public comment. Okay. Uh, public comment is now open. Christina, any public comments? We have one speaker card from Taiwan, the country. So you got three minutes to speak. Okay. Um. So, uh, because this is agendized item, my questions deserve to be answered per the Brown Act. Um. Why is it that I'm seeing such dramatic difference for single family homes? The increase is only $5, but for multi-family homes, 
such as townhomes, and I'm not sure if it's, you know, includes apartments, the increase is whopping $58. And the commercial rate is reasonable at 28. I know none of you guys live in multifamily housing. I want to caution you, there is a lot of layoffs. A lot of people aren't going to make it come next year. This you can consider as a tax or this is an inflation. And this is all because of Joe Biden, of their green energy. Why? Because by collecting these solid waste and bio waste, they will send them to a facility to create ga gas that can be used for to substitute to offset the lack of petroleum energy. I would like to know where is the facility after these people or Alameda people, after our people authorize them, they collect our trash, where do they send these to? So like, you know, supervisors at our county level, such as Supervisor Joya, shut down Chevron, shut down, you know, the, the facilities that are able to create energy that this country has abundance of, and they want to create these kind of energy. And these days when I drive on the freeway, the air is so foul. I can't even begin to tell you please, how please foul it is. Idea. And it is not due to carbon release. It smells like bioenergy kind of smell. I would like to know exactly where these facilities are because they're also dangerous and hazardous to human health. Lastly, I would like to understand what is solid waste? So for the staff, a rundown of my question, why is it that you're charging multifamilies the most? And how did you come to come up with this um, number breakdown? Why is it that you're giving these people who own single family homes a, only a, a mere $5 increase, but for mostly immigrants in Doherty Valley, $58 increase? And what is solid waste? And where is the facility that these bio, energy, uh, bio waste is going to turn into green energy? Thank you. Um, the first question is the difference between why there is a difference in single family, multifamily. I know you already mentioned, but please clarify those questions. I'm happy to talk about it. It is purely scale. If you look at the type of service that we have uh, that we have listed here, it's two cubic yards of trash service. This is different than the like the 96 gallon bundled service, uh, you can fit four 96 gallon carts into one of, into a two cubic yard bin. We are talking about a multitude. So that's four times. And uh, if you, so that's shared amongst several families and we, we see that. Uh, and this does so it's an apartment this... complex, right? When we talk multifamily, it's yes. an entire yes, yes. apartment complex. Yes. Apartment complexes, townhouses, oh. any place that has shared service. So there could be six, eight, ten families using one two-yard bin. Correct. And then next to it is a recycling bin, and next to that is a green bin. Correct. So and and that's bundled service. Those that's other two service. are free. Okay. Yeah. So basically, based on the capacity, you charge them. So that increase the change in the increase rate. So that answers the question. It's so just, the next yeah. question was like, I don't know if we need to even answer, but anyway, uh, where these uh, waste stages, where the facilities are? So the facilities, uh, we take our uh, trash, solid waste material, which is all mixed up and it hasn't been sorted at all. Uh, anything that's not hazardous, it's any in any case, uh, that is taken to Vasco Road landfill. Um, and the... Organics are taken to Vasco and transferred to forward composting and landfill run by Republic. Both are run by Republic. And the recycling goes out to San Leandro, Davis Street. Correct. And recycled at the uh, Aladdin Avenue. And uh, what is the solid waste? Just there's another question. So uh, that, that's what it was. It's all mixed, all mixed. the mixed waste, everything in there except for hazardous wastes. Uh, and it's not been sorted. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks for answering those questions. So now, um, any other public comment? We do have one hand raised on Zoom. Uh, please bring them on. Dinesh Govinderao. 
Dr. Dinesh. Hi, Dinesh. Go ahead. Hey, guys. How you doing? Uh, how you doing? Yeah, um, no. Yeah, no. First of all, I just wanted to say that, Carrie, thank you for a really nice detailed presentation. Um, uh, what I and I totally understand that with inflation and you know that this that charges are going to increase and and for them to keep be able to keep up with with the you know current uh, climate of inf inflation. I think my only comment that I just have is you know when you look at those options and you look at option number three, um, and, and and granted the two dollar increase is you know. Um, is, is a nominal charge, you know, over spreading it out over 17,000 residents. I get that. But I guess my only question I would just have the council members think about is the, the principle of, of, of that, you know, of um, the folks you're affecting in option three. And, and you know, if, if folks are actually using 20 gallons or 20, you know, 32 gallon uh, types of, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, cubic, you know, um, um, uh, garbage containers, they're, and if they're using less than what other people are, are doing, and they're actually, you know, trying to recycle more, but we're penalizing those folks, does that make sense? And so that's just something to think about, um, you know, because the whole point is, you know, the, these are the folks that are, you know, trying to, you know, minimize the usage of garbage and, 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 and solid waste and trying to do a better job of recycling and focusing their um, efforts on that. So that's, that's my only comments I have. Again, you know, this is, it's probably not an easy decision with the three options you have uh, in front of you, but um, just wanted to share that with uh, with the council members here today. Any other public comment? That was the last. Okay. okay, with that, I close the public comment. Uh, let's start our conversation, please. Um, something I don't think it's very clear to people, the, put up the chart that shows the the bars you know, the uh, steps bars, um, the actual, and I, I spent a lot of time with, with um, Dave Kruger and discussing these. And the curious thing is that the cost of servicing a 20 gallon and the cost of servicing a 96 gallon is not very much. <laughs> the cost of the waste hauler to go pick up that bin and then go to the next one and pick the next one up, the cost difference between the small ones and the big ones is not very much. The trucks that cost, the fuel, the driver, all those kinds of things. And as you point out, those people generate a lot of, maybe proportionally more recycling and more green. And they pay zero incremental costs for the recycling and the green. So the, revenue stream and the cost um, streams are actually going in opposite directions. As you reduce your um, bin size, you reduce the revenue to the hauler, but you didn't really reduce the cost to the hauler. You probably increased the cost of the hauler because you were now recycling more. So as they get less income, they also get more cost. Funny thing also happens kind of in the water business. In the water business, uh, they have very large fixed costs and very small incremental costs, but yet their cost structure, uh, their revenue structure is such that they have small fixed revenue and very large incremental revenue. And that's why droughts are, um, play havoc with water companies. Um, based on that, uh, the people who are still in the 20 and 35 gallon are still getting a bargain. They really are. And this encourages them to, to, to do that because they would double or even more um, their costs should they decide that just, they just can't deal with a 35 gallon bin anymore or a 20 gallon bin anymore. So my recommendation is that we go with the all in um, option and um, provide the um, the overall rate payers with the best, um, the smallest overall rate increase, recognizing that the smaller bin bundled services will also end up with another $6 per quarter. One big Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was just gonna make a comment. I did a tour of the facility and Welcome recycling of the recycling facility. 
And it's interesting how much solid waste and trash ends up in that facility. I think there were like five or six different places where it was cleaned and cleaned and maybe seven. I, I lost count at one point um, of how much cleaning actually takes uh, place before it is truly recycled material. Um, so people do behave badly and <laughs> we know that the state is coming hard, down hard on some of that, but um, a lot of investment goes in that recycling facility uh, to actually take you know, from the bins to the recycling facilities and what's happening. So, um, you know, it was, it's eye-opening. I think it's, you know, they do get public tours. So if anybody wants to go to ACI and look at what they're doing over there, uh, how they're cleaning up what we're calling recyclables mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and making sure they're truly recyclables, we're not there yet. Um, people might be using smaller bins and then just tossing everything else in the other. I'm not saying everybody's doing that, uh, but it's certainly happening, right? That that facility is quite busy over there, which is trying to um, take, take out the true recycled stuff. So um, there's certainly a lot of investment going uh, inside and making sure that we are reaching that. Um, I, I think I was... Um, visiting my cousin in Ohio and uh, I was looking for an organic spin and he's like, no, we don't do that yet. So <laughs> we, you know, we are providing that facility. I've, I've been to places where people are like, yeah, just toss everything in together. We're, we're not for, you know, we're not doing organics or recyclables or any of that. So uh, for us to be able to have these options, to be able to provide this to our community. Um, and I know people have, you know, in the beginning when we started the service, um, we had a festival and people said, where's the organic spin? We didn't find that, right? So so people start noticing and a community is responsible and would like to continue down that uh, recycle organics path. It's the right thing to do for the earth, the environment. Um, but, um, you know, I would agree with Council Member Perkins that we kind of share the cost. Um, it's not going to be too expensive uh, and it'll spread it more evenly across um, all the other pairs. So all in sounds good to me. Council member. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I've toured that facility also. It's a very impressive uh, facility. I, what I'm struggling with a little bit is, is you know, I go back to the, the public comment earlier about, you know, kind of passing this on for the 20 and 35 gallon customers. I, and I understand what you're saying there. Uh, Council Member Perkins, uh, it just seems like we're, you know, everybody's got a uh, share in this uh, rate increase, uh, but it just is hard to want to pass on some additional cost uh, to our twenty and thirty-five gallon customers. Most of the most of the buckets I see out there, the bins in my neighborhood are thirty-five gallon bins. That's that's the majority of them. Uh, so it's essentially, you know, it's the statistics there, 17,000, that's, it's almost everybody is going to see this $6 a quarter. Uh, a quarter increase. Yeah, that may not sound like a lot, but we're all kind of feeling it in our pockets right now anyway, in a lot of different areas. And this is just one more area. And we hear enough about, you know, cost increases. I, I've heard people talk about uh, the cost of the this contract in particular, but I I don't think they they're looking at it from a perspective of um, you know we, we almost have kind of a gold standard of you know service here. This is really good uh, good service uh, relative to some of the other communities. My daughter lives in Pleasant Hill. They don't even have the right color bins. You know, you you open up the blue bin, you think you're going to put recycling in there. Nope, that's their garbage <laughs> bin. And it's very confusing because, you know, my daughter and her husband came from San Ramon. So, yeah, they're throwing their diapers into a blue bin for their baby. What do you so. got, like two more years and everybody's going to have to go to regular bins? Oh, something? I don't think it's two years. But, yes, SB 1383 standardized the colors of those bins just yeah. to cure that yeah. problem. And not everybody's converted. And so yeah. those those customers in those towns are going to, I'm sure, see a rate increase 
to accommodate for that transition. Mm -hmm. uh, we've already made that transition at the beginning of this contract. Right. So yeah, I'm a little troubled by passing that on, but of course we're we're passing cost on. Uh, if we go with option two, also we're gonna our our small businesses are gonna uh, pick up some additional costs as well. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a little torn by this, but uh, I think at the end of the day, uh, I'd probably go with with uh, kind of the all in option as well. Sounds good. So um, thanks, uh, Council Member Perkins, for providing us a little background as well as education. I, on I the think survey. I'm the only one that was here. <laughs> Dave was yeah. here, but I think I'm so the especially only one. yeah, especially the survey, right? That survey, uh, our community is definitely that, that survey was key. It really yeah. was, and I think that that survey taught the council that sometimes cost isn't the number one driver. And I, ACI's record of customer service has, um, has been exceptional. Um, and it certainly has been better than the other. The other one was good, don't get me wrong, but ACI has done, has really stepped up. Sounds good. And also about the 15% over the three, three years, right? So if you well, split it over the period, then um, we can see what, what it can be impact. Uh, also about your explanation on the deviation of uh, as you garbage yeah. is uh, lowering, you're increasing your recycle. Yeah. So obviously the cost, that's a very good example that you give. So um, I have one more question before we open for voting, but um, if anyone in economical um, uh, like situation where uh, can they apply uh, for any subsidy on this one Relief. like seniors or anybody in economical situations where i don't believe we have a, a low income lower income no such option mm -hmm. so okay yeah that's the only reason as council member armstrong mentioned i'm also a little bit uh initially was with option two so that we can not put that impact on um that 20 gallon users mm -hmm. uh, so but then uh, it looks like all options is a Good, good choice at this point. So uh, with that, let's open for voting. I'll, I'll move we accept the all option option. I can second. Okay, let's go for voting. And Christine's probably gonna have to accept the vote. Well, um, item 10.5 resolution 2022-144 is approved with the uh, yes four, no vote one. Wait. Oh, we have it. You have a- uh, We have one more thing. Options. Is that okay? Okay, okay can I can do it without you? Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> we have one more thing and that is uh, regarding the resolution. Thank you for the direction on the all options. We will move forward with that. Uh, we have minor modifications to be included because of that we've chosen all options. We've kind of shifted our rate and service relationships. So we need uh, to engage a uh, amendment number two to the franchise agreement. Um, and with that, thank you, uh, Council Member Perkins for uh, talking about the very, the difference in containers doesn't really, uh, difference in size of containers doesn't really correspond to a difference in cost. We have a small green cart rate that's that uh, many San Ramon uh, residents enjoy, which means they have a small green cart and a uh, whatever size trash cart that is indicated in the schedule before and uh, whatever size recycling cart. Um, but they get a deep discount because of that just smaller green cart. And uh, this uh, is a feat. It's the same cost, though. And uh, it's a feature of a very new franchise agreement. And we wish to sunset that green, small green cart rate uh, in order to uh, 
make it so that future uh, rate increases are less volatile. We're going to bring that back up. But for everybody who currently enjoys that small green cart rate, they get to keep it until they change their service levels in some other format. It changes uh, ownership, that sort of thing. Can you explain that again, the small green cart? So the small green cart. So you have uh, three carts. In uh, the uh, house, this was, I believe, proposed because of housing that has very little yard out around it. So yard waste is not a concern. Uh, we uh, offered a small green cart rate at the beginning. So all that means is that you choose your trash rate, and you, I, but I only want a small green cart. So I get a, I get a discount because I only have this small green cart. But I'm paying. Uh, so it's, it's a discounted rate. For only just having the smaller okay, green so it's cart, a smaller, We're saying actually it's the same cost, cost not that little bucket like you yeah, put it's up a there. smaller, it's a it's a much smaller mm -hmm. cart. Um, so we wish to do that, but yeah, that's no changes for current customers of that uh, that have and that have that rate. It just won't be offered in the future. Correct. That's it. I wish I'd known about that small green cart rate. <laughs> Most of the time, I just. You know, it's my uh, small kitchen bucket stuff in there most weeks. Uh, but Was then there's the some weeks where I'm not know? only filling up my, my, I have the big bucket, the 96 gallon one, I think. Yes. And there's some weeks where I not only fill that, but I ask my neighbors if I can use theirs. So right. it varies. Right. Change habits. Yeah. <laughs> I and just the, put in all artificial turf, so I don't know if I need it anymore. Uh, and then, so uh, in addition to that, we are we're just looking at minor budget adjustments for ACI commercial outreach and the household hazards waste program, where we've been seeing some savings. Uh, we were also thinking about getting additional regulation and compliance assistance for city staff. This means a, a, another more consultant time. Uh, standardized rate for extra garbage bags, which you can buy here at City Hall, to a flat. $12 per bag. Right now we are uh, we have it in our master fee schedule that this uh, uh, kind of inches up uh, twice per year. And administratively that this has become a, a huge cost to staff, um, not just me, but others. And so we are wanting to standardize that flat rate until the next cost-based rate adjustment. So we sell garbage bags? I didn't know that. We do. So if you had extra trash that you wanted to get rid of, you could come by and, and buy tags to attach to Good garbage that. bags correct and then we're thinking about a monthly online recycling class for san ramon residents you can tell this is kind of the light fluffy stuff that uh i would talking like to trash huh? <laughs> that's right talking trash 101 <laughs> talking trash exactly i thought you might enjoy that mm -hmm. um and so tonight uh vote to authorize uh the mayor to execute amendment number two to the franchise agreement to accommodate rate service level adjustments and to decrease volatility in future rate adjustments. Okay. Right. So any questions? So the the resolution as is written now is okay. Yes. And, yes. and, and based because it didn't seem to get too specific on the whatever option we were going to choose, right? No, it didn't get yeah. it right. Okay. We were just going to incorporate it in amendment number two. Okay. So Martin, how we need to do this? Do we need to vote so on this? It seems we have uh, one resolution, um, but you have given verbal direction to staff. And, and if I'm misspeaking, please let me know that you've given verbal direction to staff as to how that amendment should read because it has, because you have chosen the, the, the op based on the option that you've chosen. Um, so we have, we'll, we'll take the resolution as authority to execute the contract and then the verbal direction as, as direction as to how to draft that contract. Correct. And it, I'm assuming that's the intent. Yes, that's the intent. Thank you. So we're done with this item? <laughs> we're done with the item. So, yep. Take a five-minute okay. recess and see if we can go find Dave. Yeah, let's take five minutes recess.
device may uh, just to explain what's what's happened here when when i gave my spiel what i the intent was to have a, a second motion and this one to be on the resolution itself so if we could just have we we had the motion that gave direction to staff regarding the choice and okay. now we just need the resolution authorizing the amendment Oh, okay. Oh, too slow. Oh, fast fingers. Okay, second. Okay, we have uh, more Scott Perkins and seconder Council Member Jaffer. Yeah. Ready for what going? Okay, Good. for item ten point six amendment. Okay. Amendment right. item ten point six. It's Thank just you. disappeared. So. All right. Now we um, now we can go find a yeah. four zero. That's oh, we four the old one. Yeah, that is, we can do the old Cheech and Chong routine. Dave's not here. No, I don't want to be in the which is city manager's comments. Uh, good evening. Uh, just a question for the council. As you know, we normally uh, cancel our second meeting in December because it falls in the middle of the holidays. So uh, I'm again uh, getting what the council's uh, desires to do to cancel our December 27th city council meeting. What's the pleasure of the council? I was looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, <in the> <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll take a week off. Thank you. I'm good. I'm no, really nobody's going to do it. It's December 27th. We held a meeting. We'd be, we'd be held up. Um, That's it for me. Okay. Nothing else? So you need something further other than the said cancel, canceled. City Council, let's start down here, Mark. Uh, okay, uh, on the 27th of October, because I think I gotta go all the way back then because of what our last meeting was. <laughs> um, I attended a Tri-Valley Affordable Housing Committee meeting. Uh, we got an update by Sam Cagill from League of California Cities. Uh, about an update on legislative issues that were housing related. Um, I also attended the senior advisory committee meeting uh, on the 7th of November. They talked about the Live Well Resource Fair that had occurred way back in September. It was also the 30th anniversary of the senior center. Uh, good attendance. They reported out over 300 people attended uh, and they had a display of all the different services for the seniors um, and some discussion on some suggestions on how to make it even better next year and who else ought to be invited in the future, uh, such as, you know, county connection, talk about transportation uh, for seniors and that sort of thing. Uh, they also uh, gave an update on their draft annual report and the status of their 2022 goals and uh, some proposed 2023 goals. And that will be coming to the city council at some point. Uh, the, the proposal at that time was go to the parks commission uh, with that on the 14th of December and then the city council on January 23rd. I don't know if that still stands, but those are the notes I took from that meeting. Uh, then on the 14th of November, uh, I attended the Open Space Advisory Committee meeting, uh, got a presentation uh, from our planning staff on the open space development impact fee 
uh, that's assessed on uh, the different landowners who are developing property for residential use. Uh, they highlighted the amounts that are currently adopted in our uh, city fee resolution, and then what the fund could or couldn't be used for, as well, well as a, uh, the current and projected status of that fund. They also gave an update on uh, progress for their annual goals. And then uh, there was reference this evening to uh, the East Bay Regional Park District. Um, you know, uh, there's a Southern Los Trampas land use amendment and draft EIR that we were asked if we wanted to provide comment, we meaning the, the city. So Open Space uh, Advisory Committee took a look at that. They recommended that that uh, go to the Parks Commission and then on to city council to see if we had any comment it's an optional comment we don't have to comment this is land that is it's not city property this is the Las Trampas wilderness uh, regional preserve uh, but there was general support by the committee uh, for opening up the Las Trampas uh, land bank land bank property uh, for use by San Ramon residents in the future uh, that's it on the meetings. I also attended uh, the Senior Foundation Holiday uh, Boutique over at the Community Center, which was a, a great event, uh, kind of a fundraiser for them. And also the Dublin San Ramon Women's Club Holiday Fantasy Gala uh, fundraiser, really well attended. I mean, they filled up the, you know, the, uh, the golf, golf course over there in Crow Canyon uh in their their big room and then i attended several veterans day activities uh, a ceremony in martinez at the um uh, the chambers for the uh, county supervisors and also an event in uh, in danville at the uh the veterans memorial uh, building of the San Ramon Valley. They had a, a wonderful speaker uh, talking about the Apollo 11 recovery, and they had a big display on the uh, space program uh, or a space exhibit. And then there was also a pancake breakfast uh, for veterans that I attended. And uh, lastly, I uh, was there for the Christy Yamaguchi uh ice skating rink uh, over at the city center, the, the ribbon cutting for that. And uh, that was good to see Christy there, a good, good attendance, some good singers, uh, some, yep, you want me to finish up? Yeah. All right. It was a great event. And I wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Sridhar. So um, I got uh, opportunity to attend a couple of uh, ribbon cuttings as Mayor Hudson was out of station. So one is uh, Oasis Therapy and the other one is uh, Artistry uh, Real Estate. They are in Bishop Ranch. And uh, other than that, there were a couple of other scouts events that um, I could able to attend. And there were so many other events. I'm like, I... <laughs> anyway, so, but anyway, uh, I'm looking forward for our Bahambak 5k run and walk and kids dash it is on december 3rd i'm looking forward for that uh, and many other events that are upcoming within city so, and wish you all happy thanksgiving and i will we'll just keep going right down the line till we get to the new places at city center an update on them um i attended shaping our future it's uh, something contra costa transportation authority goes to every year usually speaks at them uh did very well this year i was most impressed with the hydrogen train that is being used in san bernardino county i think we're going to see something similar here with valley link we'll see how that turns out um Went through several meetings uh, with the Air District trying to get a new app code. Essentially, that's the city manager of the Air District. Uh, we've whittled it down to three. One person withdrew, so it'll be uh, full interviews next week for uh, or on December 7th for who will be the next uh, app code at the Air District. Uh, curious to see if uh, um, I think I'll come in and bug the planning director tomorrow, see where we are with a housing element in case but no, I won't make her jump up here tonight. Um, 
The uh, first live mayor's conference meeting in what three years will be held uh, next Thursday. I intend to, to attend that in Richmond. Um, it's it's going to be interesting. Usually we do a little who's got the craziest shirt or whatever. Her name Morgan wins it every year. I'm hoping she forgot. I've got a chance. Uh, ABAG is going to be going through the same thing we are at the Air District. Uh, did one of their meetings about uh, some cities that haven't picked up their money yet, but that that's another story. Uh, MTC and ABAG are going to be looking for a new executive director starting the first of the year. Also attended the ice rink where I, I showed the crowds that I can still walk on water. They tried to get me to get out there ice skating. Yeah, right. I, I skate right off that rug and, and off this thing quick. Uh, but it's very interesting to me to see how many people not only show up for the ribbon cutting, but are still coming back day after day after day. City Center really has served its purpose as a gathering place. And I don't know about you, but I'm really looking forward to our tree lightings coming up. Um, forgot the days. We'll have uh, plenty more time to make sure people come out for that. But uh, uh, December 3rd, yep. And I think it's a 10th for uh, what they're doing, but it, city center but i just sort of put it out there so somebody can grab it as it goes down the line you know just a lot going on in the city attended another uh event uh sunday there's just so many cultural events it's like shridhar said you don't have to want to go to an event in san ramon if it's fall there's something going on on the weekend it's just what we are now it's really really exciting to see and we'll leave it at that scott hey i attended And that really plays havoc with electric rates. Uh, MCE is required to provide um, the power based on its installed customer base. And in addition, we are required to um, provide an additional 15%. Uh, what they call resource adequacy. Uh, those costs um, had to be purchased in many cases on the spot market, and spot market can be very, very expensive, particularly when there's a crunch. Um, our budget for the year uh, that we passed back in last March, we were projecting about a $90 million surplus for the year, which would have helped our reserves. We have a goal of a 60% reserve, and we're currently at about 35% on that. So we were hoping to add to our reserves. Um, and it flipped it to about a $10 million deficit. Now we could have managed a $10 million deficit, but it would have been eating our reserves instead of adding to our reserves. So SNAF has done an analysis and we've also noted that PG&E has requested a rate increase uh, starting uh, January 1 which based upon some comments at the CPUC is likely to be approved. Um, but along with this, the, there is a charge called the PCIA, which is a, a, a number that customers pay based upon what's called stranded contracts with PG&E. So when you left PG&E, they had contracts to provide power. Well, it's those contracts they still have to pay on those contracts. Well, it turns out those contracts have now become valuable as opposed to a liability. And as a result, um, our customers are actually gonna have a benefit uh, from that. So uh, we approved a four cent per kilowatt hour increase, which will be paired with a two and a half cent per kilowatt hour decrease in the PC, from the PCIA. So um, the customers will see about a one point five cent per kilowatt hour increase in their rates. And that will put us at about five cents per kilowatt hour for residential customers below PG&E. So our customers in MCE and um, over 90% of San Ramon um, residents are MCE customers will, will have a savings of about five cents per kilowatt hour going forward. So all in all, um, MCE is doing fine. And um, we expect to 
um, we have to do a final vote. It's a two-step process in the utility rate setting. Uh, so we have a proposal, we approve a proposal, and then we have a comment period, and then we have a final vote. So at the next board meeting, that will be voted on. Um, second, I wanted to mention that uh, even though the event is sold out, the um, Chamber of Commerce is having their business community awards, and lo and behold, who knew it? Our own city manager is the employee of the year. Who knew? So that's fabulous that our own city manager is employee year. And citizen of the year is also one who has been uh, around San Ramon for a long time. Dahl Barley is treasurer of the Historic Foundation, and he's a city hall docent. And he is the citizen of the year. So for those that are going to the chamber dinner, uh, you'll get a chance to uh, you know, fest, you know, fet those, uh, those people, among others. So congratulations to Joe for being employee of the year. And then he's going to be the unemployed of the year shortly after that. So you'll go from the employee of the year to the unemployed of the year um, in quick succession. That's a good way to, to go out being employee of the year to really drive hard for the next goal or something like that. So, oh, one last thing. Um, this is Sabina's last regular meeting. She'll be at the one in December, but I wanna thank Sabina for adding just a little bit more class to this ragged outfit we have here. A lot here. more. A lot more, okay, a lot, of, <laughs> lot more class to this ragged outfit we have over here. And uh, thank you for your thoughtful comments on many, many subjects. And um, we're gonna miss you on the council. But don't come in for public comment. Yeah, but if you don't show up for public comment, we won't we won't be offended. And before we go to Sabina, is there one other thing you might want to add? Any new commission or anything you get? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I've I was appointed by the uh, mayor's conference. Actually, it's the city selection committee uh, to be a one of two members throughout the county um, appointed by cities for. LAFCO, which is the Local Agency Formation Commission, uh, along with uh, Gabe Quinto, replacing Tom Butt, retiring mayor of, of um, Richmond. Richmond, and retiring um, mayor of Martinez, uh, Rob Schroeder, who have been, both been on the commission for 15, 20 years. 15, 20 years. Tom's so, about, Tom was alternate, so yeah, that's 20 years. Yeah, 20 years. And so uh, Gabe and I'll be on the, it's made up of two County supervisors, two council members, two district members, and one member of the general public. It has to be Don Bluebaugh, former city manager. Yeah, there's a. If Don leaves, there's a spot open then for a former city manager. Yeah, that's okay. okay you to do, Joe. Wouldn't <laughs> that's enough. That? Sabina, help us out. <laughs> Bring this home. All right, and listen carefully because they're up for appointments as well, and you might want to be on one of these. Um, so I was chair of the Iron Horse Advisory Committee, and um, that meeting was last Monday. That's going to be up for somebody to represent San Ramon on that. Again, it's the Contra Costa Iron Horse um, Advisory Committee. We hear a lot of fun stuff there, but I think the most important thing and most they're excited about is really the overpass uh, in San Ramon, and that keeps coming up. So everybody's kind of paying attention what that's going to look like and, uh, and how it's going to move forward. Um, so that appointment will be available soon for next year. Um, I was also chair of traffics and traffics is the traffic mitigation um, advisory committee of Contra Costa County. Again, uh, traffics is now going through uh, going to go do another study of what routes uh, should be updated based on uh, how the demographics have changed, um, how the traffic has changed. It is a traffic mitigation program. Uh, so the goal is that um, we should be looking at what routes can benefit uh, from decreased traffic congestion. Um, I also served on the arts committee, and that meeting is always fun. Uh, it's you know, The whole group is very creative, very interesting, as you can expect from the arts advisory committee. Um, and um, then the League of California Cities. Um, I was the second vice president there. Um, Again, it's a position that you can apply for. There is an opening on that board now. 
um, it's been a great experience because it really, um, you get to work with um, all the East Bay mayors and council members and those on the board, uh, bringing ideas and, and planning. And one of the things I'm super excited about is that I was able to convince them to have their Christmas party in San Ramon, mm -hmm. right here in a city hall. So um, I think that's December 8th and when League of California Cities has their Christmas party. And thank you, Joe, for um, making that happen. Um, and like Scott said, this is going to be technically, you know, my, my final meeting, the one on the 12th is going to be change of guards. Um, I just want to say that the last four years um, have been an honor and a privilege. I came to the city um, as a single parent, without a job, without a house, raising my two kids, unemployed, unemployed <laughs> and divorced, um, with two young kids. Uh, and really, I took a chance on life. And um, the reason I moved out here was because uh, my best friend lived and she was the closest to family for me. And for me to come here um, by my first house, my second house, raise my kids in this amazing community, um, start from scratch when it came to my career, um, taking BART and doing all the commutes and everything um, to really be a vice president of a Fortune 500 company um, and to have the honor of serving on the city council, I couldn't have asked for more. Um, I... Um, you know, decided I had um, served on this council. I had done my part. Um, I again took a chance of, um, you know, seeing if the next step was for me or not. Um, and, um, you know, Mayor Hudson is doing a great job and um, he will continue to do a great job um, over the next um, few years. Um, I just want to say, um, first of all, thank you uh, to my fellow council members for being gracious and kind and accepting me. Uh, you know, I was kind of not known. Nobody knew who I was. Like, who's this girl just come out of nowhere and wants to run for office? Um, you know, you guys accepted me, you embraced me, um, you mentored me, and you've always been very kind, both to, um, Scott, you and Dave, and then um, Sridhar and Mark joining as well. Um, it's just, it's been a pleasure serving on this council. Um, we have different ideas, backgrounds, and yet um, more than 99.9% .9 times, we agree on, on everything, um, which is great for our residents because I know we all think about these things. Uh, we may not always speak about them on the dais, but we we make sure that we're making the right decision um, for our city. It's not easy serving. Um, you have to keep your um, emotions in control. You have to not show bias and you have to look out for everybody in the city. Uh, and you put yourself out there. And I appreciate each one of you doing that and serving our residents and um, being there for the long haul. Um, and then secondly, I want to thank Joe. Um, he's been such an amazing partner throughout um, the last four years. Um, he's, you know, I've shared crazy ideas with him and he's humored me with some of them. Um, and we've discussed, you know, what, how we would like to, you know, and sometimes they've, they've just been, hey, this is, this is what we would love to see in San Ramon. Um, thank you, Martin for keeping me honest and, you know, making sure we, you know, uh, we stay checked in as, you know, how we serve uh, as council members and what our responsibilities are. Um, Christina and Joan and Debbie and my Kathy and um, Maria, who else is out there? Uh, Stephen, um, just, I, I don't want to miss anybody's name. Um, and thank you so much. Um, uh, I just want to say um, everybody on the staff. Uh, San Ramon is such an amazing city. Um, as I change and go and become a regular citizen again, um, I am just going knowing that the city is in amazing hands, that everybody puts their heart and soul uh, in serving the city and um, making sure that 
we go above and beyond um, you know, what we promised our residents. I know I will look at a lot of things. Like once you've served on council, you just can't go back to not looking at trash cans in other cities <laughs> <laughs> and thinking how how much are they paying or what is their what is their process. Not looking at the potholes or not complaining about the trees and trying to figure out when do they uh, cut their trees and how much does it cost them, and um, and you know, looking at passing by City Hall and looking at the lights every time to figure out what are we celebrating today, um, the farmers markets and um, the city center, which literally opened, I think, a day after I got sworn in. So I'll take credit for it. <laughs> Just kidding. You're gonna have sprinkles. <laughs> I can take this. I can take sprinkles. So it has truly San Ramon in over the last 17 years has. Uh, grown to be an even more amazing city year over year, and I'm sure it'll continue to be under your leadership as well. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, and um, just want to say again, it's a it's been an honor and a privilege of a lifetime. Thank you. Thank you, Sabina, and thank you for putting together such an uncompetitive bocce ball team. <laughs> because we were out in record time. I knew next year if you were here. That it was things were going to change. There's going to be some ringers. Okay. And any public comment on this item? Taiwan's a country. So I only have three minutes and I want to give the, the most to um, Council Member Sabina Zafar. Um, I want to be honest with you. I voted for uh, Mayor Hudson because he's proven leadership. However, I do have a lot of respect for you. As you can tell, I played the black place. And um, I am politically different, opposing, you know, from, from your belief. And so um, there were probably times that I knocked you a couple of times, but I really admire you always take it with grace um, and you are beautiful to look at. I do agree. Um, and I also admire that you do have a lot of insights. So I hope that you will continue to stay with us, especially I would like you to please try out for open space if you can, because you just mentioned that you have iron horse trail experience. And I really think that you can be of contribution and I hope you will continue to stay around. Thank you for your service. And thank you for a really nice political game, if you will, going back and forth. And um, please don't see me as an enemy. I'm also doing what I'm you know, doing for everyone's good. Thank you for your service. And um, council member uh, Armstrong, I do want to appreciate you also because you always give the public extremely detailed summary of all the meetings you have been diligently going to, um, you know, on behalf of us. Um, of all the council members, I consistently, you know, see you everywhere I go. And I really appreciate that because I understand that you probably don't have to do that, but you do. So thank you for your time and your sacrifice and for your detailed sharing. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, regarding cancellation of December 27th, I'm sure it's going to help uh, Council Member Perkins travel to Dusseldorf, Germany. And I did not eavesdrop because while the executive clerk uh, Ms. Smith could have copied me the agenda. Um, they were socializing, so I couldn't help but eavesdropped and heard. Have a safe trip. And happy Thanksgiving to you, too. And um, also, I just want to say that the open space assessment really should go to uh, maintenance as well, because as a homeowner in the GAD district, I'm tired of paying for everyone to play. And... Um, you know, those develop uh, those developers assessments should not be reserved only for growth because they benefit the nonprofit uh, East Bay Regional Parks. Furthermore, um, I believe the councils um, for open space that time, they barely made quorum. So please do not take their approval as a solid approval. It was because they were accounting on you guys to help them out because nobody read uh, that 675 page document. And when I asked Ms. Hyman, uh, what is ordinance 38 violation? She couldn't even tell me. So I, I really need some Thank clarification. Thank you. We need to wrap that. it up right now. And ordinance 38 is East Bay Regional Park District's uh, ordinance about dogs biting. You have to report it within 30 minutes. It's been in for 30 years. Thank you. Okay. That's uh, why I voted We will for you. close public comment on 
Item 11, item 12, public comment is open. On any item not on the agenda, we have any speaker cards? We do not have any speaker cards. Star card. nine or computer, fine. We'll close public comment. We are adjourned to uh, close session. Uh, does anyone wish to speak to close session items before we? Seeing none. Uh, we will convene to close session conference with legal counsel existing litigation. California Government Code 54956.9, Sarah Tuning versus City of Walnut Creek et al. United States District Court, Northern District of California, case number 321CV05154SI. And every time I see that, I, I keep thinking of that movie, The Thing. Oh, that one. When he's in the plane, he rattles off about 15 numbers. Okay, we will be back in open session after we're finished.
in open session, aren't we? Yes. Uh, we are back in open session. The council met with its attorney on the matter of Sarah Tuning versus City of San Ramon and has nothing to report at this time. If there's no further action, we are adjourned to the next regular scheduled council meeting, which will be held on December 13th. Good night, all. <laughs>